Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a smooth TikTok edit. Now, I know I've already made about three variations of a TikTok edit, but not this style. So first of all, here are the timestamps on the screen so you know what we're going to be doing. From getting our clips ready to sequence settings and adding on effects such as directional blur and also adding on lumetri color or color grading. Also, I don't know what the final result looks like because I haven't actually made the edit. So it's more of a guide since of course your edit is going to look different to mine. So first of all, let's get our clips. So all you need to do really is search for your character name and then add on Twixter at the end. It's spelled like this. So for example, I'm looking for Toji Twixter. So that's literally what I put into the search bar. These are basically slow mode clips. So you don't have to do them yourself and it saves a lot of time. So once you have found something that you like, you can either go into their description and just download it if they do provide a link or you might have to use a converter. If you can't find a converter, then check the pinned comment. However, in this case, this guy's already provided the download link. Well, to his website at least. And once you've downloaded it, just put it into a folder to keep it organized and also rename it if you would like so i'm just going to put toji twixter next open up premiere pro and we're going to create a new sequence so here are my settings if i just go into sequence and just i'm just going to name it main in fact i'm just going to click ok for now so at the moment it doesn't matter what settings you have because we're going to change it so head over to sequence settings and to fit a phone screen you can either go 1080 by 1920 or 1080 by 1440 which is a little more like square so this is 1080 by 1920 fit a phone screen 1080 by 1440 looks like this i think this works best so that's the one i'm going to go for and then set the time base to 60. if you can't see 60 then make sure that this is set to custom which is the editing mode now click on ok and import your clip onto the timeline now you might get this message, just click on keep existing settings. Now it's time for clip selection. However, we need to first of all scale it up because at the moment you can see we've got these black bars around the edges. So head over to effect controls, which is in the top left usually, and turn up the scale for the clip until they are not visible. So 134 is fine for me. Now my clip fits the frame. So I can now start picking my clips right after I unlink the audio because I don't want this audio. So just right click, unlink, Click on this and click delete on your keyboard or right click cut. There you go. Now you can select your clip. So as I said before, raise a tool or press C on your keyboard. Find the beginning of a clip you want to use. So this one, for example, and just scroll forward, make another cut. Now, of course, if you have music, it's going to be different. I'm not going to be using music because it makes it harder to explain things and also copyright. But if you just follow what I'm doing, you'll begin to understand how it works and how to match the clips to the audio. It's really simple stuff. So at the moment, focus on clip selection. So just pick out the good clips. So for example, this one that looks good. Just going to make a cut or you can just delete it. Now, if you have gaps, just right click there and ripple delete. And don't forget, you can always just freely move these around wherever you like. However, make sure that these are all on video one at the moment, which is the first track. Now, take a look at the clips I've got. So I've got clip one, two, three, four, five and six. So the first thing we're going to do is just cut them down. As I said, it depends on your audio. I don't have any, so I'm just going to keep them about, let's say 20 frames long for each clip. If you hold shift on your keyboard and click the arrow keys, so left or right, you can move your playhead five or 10 keyframes. So if I hold shift and click on the right one, five frames ahead. So five, 10, 15, 20, I can just shift these like that, extend it, just move this one back. 5, 10, 15, 20, and just repeat this process if you are following my method. If you think it's too quick, then just extend it. It's simple as that. So I can just head to the end of my first clip, 5, 10, and then just shift these like so, extend it, 5, 10, towards the end, so 5, 10, and just repeat the method. So these are the clips that I have. Now you're probably getting bored, so let's move on to the transitions and do the color grading later. So first of all, create an adjustment layer, so just here. For some of you, this panel might be down here, so it's basically where you import your clips. Right click anywhere here, and new item, adjustment layer, and click OK. Grab this and place it above your first clip, like so. Then extend it all the way to the end, and we're going to add on our first effect. So here on the effects panel, search for Gaussian Blur underneath Blur and Sharpen and drag it onto the adjustment layer. Now set a keyframe at the beginning for the blurriness and also set the blur dimensions to horizontal. So horizontal is left and right vertical is up and down pick whichever one you prefer i'm going to do horizontal set the blurriness to something like 100 depending on what you like i think that's a decent amount of blur so i'm just going to leave it now i'm going to head let's say between my clips so about 15 frames ahead for me it does not have to be accurate just anywhere in the middle of your adjustment layer and just set it down to zero then head all the way to the end of your adjustment layer one frame back so not 
there, but one frame back so then we can see the clip and reset it back to 100 like at the start. Now it's going to look a little stiff at the beginning and of course we want to improve that so just right click on this middle keyframe and select ease in. Then right click one more time and select ease out as well. Now at the moment it's a... Uh, it's okay, I think acceptable is the word. The problem is it's missing the impact. So what we need to do is open up the graph for the blurriness. So over here, you'll see a little arrow, just click on it. And now you're going to see this graph. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, I will be using the top one simply because it makes more sense usually. So I assume most of you are beginners. If you are a beginner, I just want to tell you that you won't really see many Premiere Pro editors using this line here, but rather the one below. So this one, because it's easier to use. However, we are going to be using this top one. So highlight all of them like so. So make sure they're all blue. Then right click on one of them, select Bezier, and now we can make it even better. So firstly, I'm going to extend the graph so we can see it a bit clearer. So you should see this little bar here. It's a bit transparent, but you just want to pull this down so that it extends. Select the first keyframe and just drag this handle down like so. Not too low, otherwise it's going to drop and look absolutely horrible. Like that is fine. So there you go. Perfect. A smooth curve. And now we're going to do the same for this one. So just pull it down somewhere around here. Perfect. Now it should look like a very wide U. So if you play it back, this is the result. If you think it's too quick, then no problem. Just open it back up and extend it. And you can just pull these little handles up just a bit. Same goes for the second one like so perfect now i've just forgot to do something and it makes sense because i haven't actually made the edit yet so all i'm going to do is just delete these adjustment layers it's no problem at all to explain i still haven't added the fade out so usually these kind of styles have like a fade out or fade in and also some other effects such as exposure so first of all we're going to add the exposure if you open up lumetri color over here and just click anywhere remember i've opened up basic correction so if you just click anywhere here, it really does not matter i'm just going to click Okay, fine. It's turned up the brightness. That's no problem at all because we're going to open it up anyway in the effect controls. Open up basic correction. Now keyframe the exposure, which is underneath light. Keyframe it to zero. Actually, no, keyframe it to four at the start. So select the stopwatch. And again, like before, head to the middle and set it to zero. Then to the end, one frame back and back to four. Right click the middle keyframe, ease in. Right click again, ease out. Let's see how it looks. It's not too bad, but again, we can improve it. So let's scroll down, find it again. So exposure, and we're going to try and fix up this graph if we can. It's a bit more tricky than last time. So just highlight all of them, right click and Bezier. I'm going to pull this first handle down just a bit. So maybe like that, that's fine, I think. The same goes for the last one as well. So like that, let's see how that looks. I think it might be a bit too quick. In fact, I think that looks perfect. If you think it's too bright, no problem. Just set it to something lower. So at the start, I can set it to, let's go maybe two instead of four. And the same goes for the end, two. And this is the result. However, I'm fine with four. Okay, let's make the fade transitions now. So I think we can't really use the adjustment layer anymore. So we have to use the original clip at the bottom. So if I just cut it down by one frame, right click at the end. So once you see this little like arrow symbol, and click on apply default transitions then you can just revert it back to its original position like so do the same for your next few clips so just make a cut just one frame it really doesn't matter you can do a lot if you want to all we're doing is adding a simple transition at the end so right click add it back on cut add it place it back and so on so in case you want to know this is what i have so far now we need to add the scales i don't know if i should add it now or later scale is this setting over here it lets you make the zoom ins and outs so that's what we're going to be focusing on now and we're going to be using the adjustment layer once again so add on the transform effect which is underneath distort directly below lumetri color and let's see should i do a scale out or in i think outs look the best okay so i did a whole explanation for like five minutes on the scale and it didn't really go well so i think i've got a better method so instead what we're going to do or should i say what you need to do is keyframe the scale set it to let's go 120 i think so 120 i don't know why i put 1000 and then head all the way to the end set it to 110 or 105 it's up to you right click on the uh, last one and then ease in now you can minimize this effect if you would like to you can see i've already done it for gaussian blur and also lumetri color so just click on this tiny arrow and add on transform one more time head to the middle again it doesn't matter where in the middle just somewhere here in fact you can use the keyframes that we added before to help you set a keyframe to 100 head to the end one frame back and you're going to set this to 
I think 95 or actually no let's go 90 but now I've got this black outline visible around the edges so I'm just going to keep on increasing it until it's not there so 92 that works I'm now going to right click on my first keyframe and select ease out now hopefully please look good because I've been I've been working on this for about 40 minutes already I think that looks really good okay now all we need to do is copy this adjustment layer over to our other clips so i don't know if i already explained because i probably did but what we need to do is hold alt on your keyboard and just click and drag it like so make some minor adjustments so okay that's a lot of keyframes if you want to go the extra mile you can kind of like fix these up and push them back uh, it's not really that simple though because you can see our adjustment layer has kind of overlapped our next clip and we don't really want that so uh, i guess i could just do it really quickly for the scale so i can just push that back and also the same for the first one so one two three just a few frames back which is fine i'm not too desperate for the other effects but i'll do it anyway for the sake of this video so i'm just going to push them back same goes for lumetri color just do that and also the blur like so and i think that's it just need to cut this down now and see how it looks okay that looks perfect so yeah just keep on duplicating your adjustment layer and make any changes that are necessary as a result this is what you should have which wow it actually looks pretty okay oh and of course the final part which is color grading so open up lumetri color which you are probably familiar with at this point just mess around with these settings and see what's best for you so for example contrast if you increase that the colors appear more striking you can see if i was to post this on tiktok users would be like how did you get in 4k quality even though the max is 1080p and i'm not even i'm not even editing in 4k anyway i'm just going to keep on color grading this so i can just increase the contrast for this one as well maybe and let's see if you want a colder look you can turn the temperature to the left as well so you can see it looks a bit more blue and in fact i'm going to do the same for the first one as well uh, but before i do that i'm just going to turn down the contrast so 75 and then decrease the temperature this clip is different if i decrease the temperature it doesn't really work, I think, or does it? If I increase the contrast and maybe decrease the highlights or increase them. No, I mean, yeah, it let's increase it and then turn down the shadows just a bit. This one as well, just going to turn it up just a bit. Highlight a bit lower, temperature, bit more cold, drop the shadows just a bit. And yeah, just, just follow my method, I suppose. However, it does depend on the mood that you're trying to set. One piece of advice I can give is, for example, this clip is just naturally really like dim. So you can use the exposure to brighten it up so that it's a bit more visible, maybe like one for the exposure. And then if I just increase the highlights just a little and decrease the shadows, increase the contrast a bit as well. There you go. So a before and after and this is the result i'm actually very happy with it i honestly thought i was going to scrap this video thank you to my monthly supporters as usual i will provide the project file for this for absolutely free to you however if you would like to you can buy this for only 1.99 on my ko-fi shop anyways thank you for watching peace